from. There's no bloody video. Hold on, folks. Hold on. Okay. From Microbe TV, this is Office Hours. Today's Wednesday, March 6th, 2024. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and welcome to your viral corner of the Internet. Hello, everyone. It's a rainy evening here in New York City. Pouring, in fact. And uh, tonight we have some special things for you, but let me first welcome our moderators, Tonight, we have Steph from San Francisco. We have Les from California. We have Andy Nutrition, who is experiencing this New York rain as well. Uh, and that'll do it for our mods so far. Who knows who else will come, come to us. But we have a bunch of you. Tell us where you're from. Thank you. These are new uh, computer glasses. Yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I started without video. Sorry about that. It happens. Um, tell us where you're from. And while you're doing that, I will tell you, uh, again about Texas. So we're, we're going to Texas, uh, the next week for South by Southwest. There'll be a, um, a session at South by that I am chairing on Tuesday at 10 AM. If you're going to South by, it's all about using viruses to benefit humanity and um uh that'll be at south by but i'm also going to be doing a tuivo while i'm there in fact tuivo number 100 and we have a little picture of that there we go uh johnson city texas at the science mill it's a science museum for kids and uh, i will be going there with nels and rich condit and uh, uh, some guests recording tuivo 100 at the mill if you're going to go, we'd love to hear, have an RSVP from you because we're going to have a little reception afterwards. So the event is about 5 p.m., and then we'll have a reception afterwards. And um, we'd like to know how many people are going to come so we get enough food and drink. We will also live stream the event for those of you that can't make it. At least we're going to try and live stream it. You know, this I've never live streamed on the road before, so let's see how that works out. So that's one. And then uh, the Monday, we will have a TWIV at the University of Texas, me and Rich Condit and Jason McClellan. That's going to be at 11 a.m. in the Norman Ackerman building. That is where um, um, <laughs> that is where I'm just getting too distracted. That is where the TWIV 500 was. It's a big conference room in that building. It's on the first floor. I think it's right as you go in, so you, you can't miss it. And that you don't need to RSVP for. Just show up, and uh, we'll make sure that you can get in. And um, there's, there's so three events in, in uh, Austin, Texas. That should be fun. And um, what else did I want to tell you? Hmm, I'm going to give you a tour of the incubator later. In about 10 minutes or so, um, we'll do that and just to get people here so that more people can see it. And, um, the, you know, this is depending on some technical wizardry so that I have to get up from this chair and move around. And, and our studio manager, Karen, is here, and she's going to be um, running the camera. And we have wireless stuff, but you know how tech is. It may not work, but we'll try. So let's see who's here tonight. <laughs> John is from... Minneapolis, where it's 50F10C. And Maureen is from Northeast Ohio, where it's raining. Thank you, Abdul, for your contribution to science communication. Really appreciate it. And speaking of contributions, uh, below your video window, there's a button where you could click and give us some money. Or you can go to Venmo, which is right above my head, at Microbe TV is our address. Or you can go to microbe.tv slash contribute. A couple of ways there that are in addition, like PayPal and sending us a check. You can even come in person and visit and 
bring a check if you'd like, or you can put it in the mail. We we depend on your support. All this cool studio here, it runs from your donations and all the people now working with us, uh, all your donations, and we can't do it without you, so we appreciate it. Lise is in Florida instead of Columbus this week. Good to see you. Joseph is from southwestern Ontario. Laura is from San Francisco. Thank you very much for your contribution to Science Communications. Uh, hearing about the person who received 217 COVID shots <laughs> made me wonder, would there be negative immunologic consequences? I know someone who had 60 doses of oral polio vaccine when he was a kid. Uh, after a certain point, it really doesn't matter anymore. I saw a talk just last week where they showed that after so many doses of COVID mRNA vaccine, you just don't make any higher levels of antibodies. You don't get any more broader uh, kinds of antibodies. And I don't know what that number is, but 217 is way above it. Now, could there be negative consequences? <clears throat> I think... Um, if you drive uh, somatic hypermutation, right, the maturation of antibodies to make them higher affinity, uh, you could end up driving antibodies that react with self and get autoimmunity. I mean, there's a speculation. I don't know if that actually happens, but, uh, you know, it could happen, I suppose. Okay, who else do we have here? Uh, Martha is from Charleston, Charleston, South Carolina, I, I presume. The azaleas are blooming. Costella is in uh, southwest Ohio, rainy also. Kang is from Chicago, where it's four degrees. Oh, that's, that's chilly. Here it's um, nine degrees. We have a flood watch. But we're on the seventh floor, so we're safe. Should be okay. <laughs> and Kang has a question. We'll get back to that. It has to do with innate immunity, which we covered this week. Hello from eastern Massachusetts from MK. Pete is warming up with the Baltimore scheme on lecture number three. Yes, what better thing to warm up with is than the Baltimore scheme? It's just lovely. Uh, Jan is from Tucson, Arizona, where it's 20C. Wayne is from Urbana, Illinois. Thalia 7 is from the Philippines. Far away. I didn't see her yet. She's at the bottom, but I see Amy's here. Yeah. Hello, Amy. Are you um, doing uh, transmission, uh, Karen? You want to try it? No, I'm not. I just want to see how it works. <clears throat> Let's switch cameras. <clears throat> Let me turn off this comment. <laughs> We're playing with tech here. Oh, look. <clears throat> so this is a um, Karen is sitting over there with a remote camera that's broadcasting. Um, wirelessly and there you go it's another yeah, view it looks good yeah the lines are off that'll work so later when we take a tour we're going to use that but for now we're back to the usual let's see we ended up at the philippines angry penguin is in toronto michaela lopez is from buenos aires argentina very nice welcome carol is our favorite nephrologist from southern california apparently rainy Angela's in Manhattan, who's and you're experiencing this torrential rain as well. Peter is from Boulder, Colorado. Pete is from London. That's cool. I like London. Cheryl's from Santa Rosa, California. Uh, Sean is from Tennessee. Hans is from Guayaquil, Ecuador. Nebby is from Lake Wales, Florida. Hey, there's Alina from Coxsackie, New York. Janice is Pennsylvania, north of Pittsburgh. Silent Runner is from Wichita. SRR is from Paso Robles, California. Dennis says, hey, your video gets better and better. Now you've got some nice color, which enhances the shot. Good job. Color where? <clears throat> In the background, you mean? Thank you. Uh, I play with the colors a lot because the the 
bulbs can be adjusted. So thank you, Dan. Dennis knows his, his uh, lighting. He's a, he's a TV guy, if I remember. Thank you, Dennis. Jessica's in Toledo, Ohio. And yes, <laughs> Les points out that the science mill that we're going to record Twivo 100 at was founded by Nels Eldi's parents. That's right. <laughs> From RSV to RSVP. Yeah, that's right. One more letter and you get there. Brian, hello from Montreal. Peter says, Johnson City is like a little Texas mecca. I like the hill country overall. I don't know anything about the hill country, so I'll be experiencing it. <clears throat> Rich Condit and I and Karen are going to be driving there on Sunday. Hello, Calliope again from Toronto. Calliope of the um, musical instrument and, and the goddess name. Thank you very much for coming back. <laughs> Bridget said, hit the like button. I know you can do it. Thank you, Bridget. We have 140 people here and 68 likes. Just hit the like button. This is a good time. It's early on in the broadcast. And um, <clears throat> maybe it'll attract more people. I'm going to keep your questions for later. Hello, Karen from Maine. Nice to see you. Elizabeth from West Virginia. Sparta of us is from Sparta of us is from the UK. Uh, Hans just finished my latest lecture. Is SARS-CoV-2 a cytopathic virus? Yes, it is, actually. It kills cells. It causes them to fuse also. Different kinds of cytopathic effect. Matthew is from Charlottesville, Virginia. Hello, Amy Rosenfeld. Welcome back. And people are very excited to have Amy. Look at that. Hello, Amy. Hello, hello. <laughs> Gwen is a Michigander. Here's Tom, our, one of our moderators from Denver, en route to Eugene from the airport. Yeah, you can check in on your phones. It's pretty cool. Al Terrell is from West Virginia. Andrew is in Victoria, Australia. So Australia is a country where we are visiting uh, maybe twice this year. <laughs> ChatGPT does not understand the Baltimore scheme. Really, if you ask um, ChatGPT uh, what's the Baltimore scheme, they don't know what it is. Okay, that's too bad because it's out there. Junebug is in Virginia. Matt is in Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, that was a side shot. We, Karen doesn't have it up anymore. You have the put the camera up again. We'll show them the side shot. They want to see it. <laughs> You're not broadcasting yet. Are you ready? No, I don't have a signal. Somehow it went away. So this thing is no longer seeing your broadcast. That's the problem. So this is not connected. Did you shut them off or something? Yeah, I'm going to restart it. You know, the transmitter, uh, just leave it on. I, I don't know why it would disconnect. So we have a wireless HDMI thing, and it just doesn't behave well. Maybe you have to be here for it to pair. I don't know. Yours says one on the side, right? The uh, it HDMI, five. it says five. Uh, yeah, now mine is on one. Okay. There we go. Uh, oh, it went away now. <laughs> this one is, uh, okay, now it's paired. Let's try it again. Sorry, folks. Yeah, there we go. There's our side shot. A new toy. Um well, that's funny. They're, they're not. Yeah. Well, anyway, we'll do more with the, the real tour. So, yes, yeah, side shot. Uh, let's see. Truth or Dare is from La Jolla. Tractor Poodle from Bangkok. Wow. That's pretty darn far away. Wow. Spar is from Boston. <laughs> Very Nika. Hello. Uh, Privet. Right? Privet from cold Moscow. Minus 12C. Holy cow. Click the like. Thank you, and good to see you very, Nika. 
and we'll we'll get you moving on the translations. I haven't forgotten that. Rima is from Iowa. Nice to have you. Uracil87 is from El Paso, Texas. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Carol says, my own mother, Albert Einstein College of Medicine, received a billion dollars in donation, free tuition for all students. You know, I'm sure you were a student there while I was still, at, well, I'm still at Columbia, but I, I used to lecture there, and I know that the medical students didn't hear me, but I'm sure you were a student at that time. Hmm. Garrett is coming to Austin. Thank you, Garrett. Rearranged his schedule. Thank you so much. Fire Ams is in Atlanta. KW is near Berkeley. Razor is in Saskatchewan. Steve is in Columbus, Ohio. Frank is in Santa Barbara. <laughs> Maureen is from Portland, Oregon. Notice I say Oregon. Patricia is from Massachusetts. And Rob, thank you for your contribution to science communication. Really appreciate your support that we can do all of this cool stuff. So if we haven't, I think that's the end of the list for now. Let's try to do a tour, um, Karen. So I have to, oh, Bridget's from Evansville, Indiana. Thank you, Bridget. I have to put my, my, my remote mic on. So normally you say I use this stationary mic, but now to walk around the studio, I need a remote, uh, a wireless mic that is going to uh, feed back into you, hopefully. <laughs> this is the first time we're trying this. Who knows? I have to turn it on. And then I have to turn the receiver on as well. And Karen, you're rolling, right? Let me clip the mic on here. And we're going to turn off the other mic. Okay, the remote is on. I'm going to turn off my other mic. So this mic is now off. Give me, tell me if you can hear me. I know the sound is not going to be great, okay? It's, it's a wireless and it's a lavalier. It's not as good as this one, but can you hear me? Tell me in the chat right away and then I'll get up and we'll start to walk around, yeah? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? And there's a 20 to 30 second delay, I know that. Meanwhile, who else is here? Loretta's from Kalispell, Montana. Remote is working. Thank you very much. And Giza is from Bangkok, Queens, Sirikit Park. Wow, two people from Thailand tonight. Okay, let's, let's go for a walk, Karen. What do you think? I'm ready. I'm going to switch the video so now you can follow me around. So I'm getting up from my desk. You see Karen is walking towards me. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't fall over everything. And then, now you can see where I sit. Give them like a, the back end view here of what I got in front of me. All right, beautiful. Look at the live zooming. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the focus comes, you know, it's a little slow. Let me get this last comment down here. So this is where I sit normally with you guys, the camera right in front of me. I have your comments in front of me here. And then uh, the my video is there, but it's also in the teleprompter. So the camera is behind the teleprompter. And then I have the stream running on this laptop so I can see stuff that's happening. Okay, so now I'm going to get up. Uh, show them the board here. This is cool. It's got lots of lights. <laughs> so this is our audio board uh, where the mics go in. We have some processors below it as well. And a little sticky to remind me what to do because there's so many buttons I can't remember. <laughs> And then over here to the left of it is a video switcher. So there is where I can switch between cameras, like camera one, which is there, and back to camera three. And, and Dennis is going to know uh, all about that. So let me get up and walk around. Let's, let's take a look at the, um, the shelf. How about that? So the shelf behind the uh, place where I broadcast is it's, it's, it's the, the autofocus. Try to find a place to stand. Yeah, that's going to be... There we go. Okay. Th it's an automatic focus as well as automatic exposure. That's a good exposure. All these artifacts here. Top shelf. This is a, a knit bacteriophage that um, um, one of Mark Martin's former students 
made for me. This, by the way, I call the Mark Martin moment where I go through things on the shelf. Did you ever sleep with that plushie? No, I never slept with the plushie. But we got a, a cowbell here. Someone sent us a cowbell. And then more viruses here in the second shelf. We have polio virus and we have the polio genome beaded by Ann Palmenberg, which is very cool. SARS-CoV-2. Then on the third shelf, we have the bobblehead made for me by Lise, who's on the stream, right? And it's very cool. Um, we have a mouse knitted by one of you, and I, I know you're on the stream tonight. Maybe MK in Eastern Massachusetts. Mice lie on the back. How cool is that? <laughs> Lots of virus models here. I like these buckyball models. They're very instructive. My Ernest, my Richard Ernst medal. Richard Ernst co-invented the MRI, and I got this for science communication a number of years ago. This is one of my favorite. This is the. You hate it? Why? It's just like. It's YouTube. too bougie. It's just YouTube. It's like, meh. It's not as interesting as anything else. Okay, but it's a hundred thousand subscribers, and mm. I think for a nerdy science communicator, that's that's <laughs> pretty cool. Um, and then lots of things people have given me. This is a cool glass sculpture from the live stream. Give me, a me, on that one. me and Amy. Hang on. Yeah, I'm waiting. Hang on. Wait for it. Wait. There we go. Wait. Your hand behind it isn't particularly useful. Is Wait. that good? I actually need a. Oh, I, I can see Amy, but not you. It's okay. I need a dark background for it. I can put that. I can put mm. that up here. Here we go. Thank you. How's that work? That's pretty good. I think these 3D glass sculptures are pretty cool. Pretty cool. And we got a bunch of those. A lot of viruses here. There's a glass virus by, um, I can't listen to myself anymore. I'm going to have to take yeah. these off. Yeah. Because th I only have a six so foot wire. So give them warning that you won't see comments for a minute either? Yeah. So we're not going to respond to your comments for a minute, but. Uh, we'll try to go back. To we'll get back to you. Yeah. This is by Luke Jerram. He's a glass blowing artist in the UK. He's in museums and he makes beautiful sculptures of viruses. This was given to me by my TWIV co- actually all the podcast co-hosts on the occasion of TWIV 600. That was at the beginning of the pandemic. It's just beautiful. Spikes. It's called Untitled Future Mutation. I wow. think it's really cool. And then we have books mainly on the next two shelves. And the stuff that you just put there. I like I like the <laughs> ferret. So f monk right. mouse mice lie, um, monkeys exaggerate, and ferrets are not humans. But this was given to me once, and I keep it here on the shelf. Okay, and that's basically it. There are just books down there. This room is highly soundproofed. Can you show them the soundproofing? How do we turn on the light? Should we turn the light on? I'll okay, go ahead, turn the light on. So now all the cool lighting is going to go away, but we'll, we'll get back to it. Um, let's take a walk. Can we walk around? Yep. This is this is part of the soundproofing. Colors selected by Amy on all of these, and it goes all the way around. So the studio continues here. And here is where Daniel and I sit when we do the clinical update. If you may remember the nice red chairs and the uh, virus-like sound dampening in the back here. We have a camera here and a camera there to to broadcast us here as well. So this is for one-on-ones. You might remember that I interviewed Carl Zimmer here and um, um, the guy from Colorado. What's his name? The polio guy. Kevin. Oh, the young guy. Kevin. Can't remember his name. Yeah. I know Amy. We should have prepared better for this. Well, I'm just <laughs> ad-libbing it. Ke Amy is screaming, Kevin Messicar. Ah. <laughs> Eventually, I get it. Then a bunch of equipment here. Make sure you don't trip. And then we come around and maybe show them the desk view from the back. I think that's cool. I'll stand back here. Okay, so here's a screen that we use for you guys. Oh, we lost the, the image here. You did. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, folks. A little technical uh, crap. Let me get another battery. Go back to your other thing. I'll be right back. Is your battery out? I guess so. Why did it go? You turned it on too soon. Oh, it can't last for two seconds. Well, I don't know when you turned it on. Go ahead and uh, switch it back quick. You can use your same microphone, right? I can. Okay. So uh, 
the transmitter <laughs> stop transmitting. Yeah. Th so there's no more power there. Nope. Be right back. Oh. So we have this this wireless HDMI transmitter. This is how it works. Look. So it's a video camera. Uh, it's a video camera. It's just a Panasonic Lumix, and the HDMI out is going to a wireless HDMI transmitter, and that's how we can walk around. And apparently, this little battery here has already died, which is not surprising. Um, we need a big battery, and we do have a big battery. It's just, uh, you know, it was a little heavy for for Karen, but she's going to have to do it. Uh. Tell them we got this new toy just for them. Uh. Doesn't want right. to come out. Do you want to play with it? Mm -hmm. But this thing, you need two hands here. That's right, I got it. This thing, um, push it really hard. Woo! <laughs> I, knew, <laughs> I knew it was going to shoot across the room. <laughs> yeah, big battery is what we need, right? Yep, I think so. Especially, I think this pulls a lot of power. All right, we have to talk fast from now on. He, he come here, I'll hold it with you. You, you got it? I got it, I got it. This is budding technology. Tell them we got it just for them. Yeah, just for you so we could do a tour. Patience. Okay. So this is the, um, the, the main studio, the recording area. It's I that's think you need sound to treated. that one back on and off. Oh, this one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just turn it on. It, they take a few seconds to mm -hmm. pair up. And then we're going back down to one, is that right? Yeah. What are you on, five? No, I was on, I started on eight for some reason. There we go. This is one. And they should communicate and pair up. Mm-hmm. Did they yet? Can you keep it plugged into something? Well, the, the camera, the camera it can't uh, on a tour. There we go. It's working. Let's do the tour quickly. So now okay. everything is working. I think you're fine. You got a big battery. Show them your editing suite. So this is the editing desk here, mm -hmm. um, where it's a, it's a stand-up desk where we edit our videos and audios here, and it's got this uh, soundproofing because this is the door to the exterior here. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. let's. Should we go into the? Uh, you don't need to rush. I don't right? need to rush. No. I'll sit down here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Show them what it looks like while you're editing. <laughs> And then Karen comes in. I'm watching my own stream here, delayed. Right. Oh, now it's just switched over. Delayed, delayed. Oh, this is fascinating. Right? Okay, now that's enough. Come on. Okay, let's go out into the outer office, right? Mm-hmm. Where there seems to be music playing. Why do, are we having a party? Hmm. <laughs> We're having a party. I think you should dance. Uh, oh, me? Anybody want to dance? Anyway, here we have speakers because you need to have music to be creative, right? Right. And we have lights, as you can see, flashing different colors. You probably can't see very much, but we'll turn the lights on in a moment. That light, is so fun. that light is a lot of fun. It beats to the music, right? Mm -hmm. All right, we can turn on the lights. Okay, so this is our main, I don't know, office area, chill area. We have a big table here where people work. We have our Ebola painting, which maybe many of you have already seen uh, online, which was painted by David Molesky. This is just such a great piece, right? Look how big it is. And here we have a little chill corner. We have, we have chairs to sit in. How many people work here? So there's me, there's Karen, there's Kim, Veronica, uh, Valerie, sorry. <laughs> so four people come here, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have David, our video editor. We have Jessica who makes TikToks. And Lisa well, Webb. Lisa does our website and Veronica is the accountant. So we have like eight people associated with Microbe TV so far, right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And it's all from you guys. We couldn't do it without you. Okay, so thank you for your donations. Here are cool chairs, like this one, and they swivel. <laughs> cool. 
Hey, that was good. <laughs> uh, this is a painting by Dixon, a watercolor of his. Very nice. I love it. Here is um, Michelle oh, Banks. You don't read? How do you know I don't read them? <laughs> a, a watercolor by uh, Michelle Banks. Yeah, maybe we have to. Do there's manual a, focus. There's a, you could do manual focus. Yeah. So if you auto override the auto, you just do it manually. It works, right? Yeah. Anyway, this is Michelle Banks, and then come around to the library here, where mainly this is Dixon's collection from his office. None of these are my books. Very few of these are my books, but lots of Dixon books, plushies of parasites and viruses and so forth. So, and, and there is uh, your, your parasitic diseases. If you win it on TWIP, you get it. There we go. So, a little library here. Okay, let's go to the other parts. Not much left. Kitchen. Kitchen. Which has everything you need. You got a fridge, you got a microwave, you got a sink, you got a counter for making sandwiches or whatever. And eventually we're going to have more viruses in our kitchen after yes. I find more viruses to put up <laughs> than any kitchen <laughs> in, the, in the United States, maybe? In the world. Well, I don't know how many kitchens we're have, have more viruses, viruses right? than any kitchen. And finally, the, our office with the only functional. I can go in here, right? Mm -hmm. Window. <laughs> I can go in there, right? Here we are. And we have a window that works. Maybe you could give him a shot outside the window to give him a taste of New York City. Mm, turn the light out. There we go. Is it raining? seem to be right this second. No, it isn't. It's good. It's good news. All right. All right. And that's really our tour. Oh, and wait. To what? the wall. Oh, yes. This is very important. These are some of your love notes that you've sent us over the years. Here's Ar Artemis and Brian, who are on. Uh, Brian is on the stream tonight. Okay. That's your thank you. And all of your other notes for um when you give something when you appreciate what we're doing or whenever you have an existential crisis when i have a crisis i come here and and <laughs> karen calls this the wall of love notes okay so this is very important thank you all for your support of what we're doing here oh the map on the door the calendar oh ah, yes yes look at this we're actually organized well we're getting there we have uh, calendars of shows when they're going to be recorded and when they're going to be released. This is all Karen's doing. The, the little magnet is when the recording happens. So today is the 6th of March. We recorded Beyond the Noise. And then when is it going to be published? Oh, the 11th. But it's not on there because we're out of town. Because I'm going to make you do it sooner. <laughs> OK, but anyway, that's the Good idea. Do it sooner. The, the uh, disc is when it's recorded. And then the writing is when it's published. So we can look at this and get a glance two months in ahead ahead of time. So that's very cool. All right. All right. Oh, wait. Real quick. On air sign. This is very important, but no one pays attention I to it. I do. You, you? Yes. Should, I think it needs to be here. No, it's perfect. We just have to <laughs> warn people. <laughs> OK. They don't know it's a studio all the time when they walk in. OK, folks, I hope you like that. Uh, let's go back to, OK. Bye bye, folks. Well, <laughs> bye bye for that angle. Um, we're going to go back to this camera. We're going to go back to that that microphone. Do you want me to look at the things people have said in case I can give you some more that you missed? What? Do you want me to go through the notes? No, it's okay. You got it. I got it. Hello. See now, are we back? Hello, are we back? My my earphones are not in. Oh, let's get your earphones. Plug that in. There we go. We got it. You got them? 
Where is my pocket? Mm-hmm. Well, that's like being with the family and not seeing them. I agree. <laughs> All right. All right. We are back. <laughs> uh, hope you like that. I, the tech actually worked, right, Karen? Thank you, Karen, for, for doing that. My pleasure, man. Uh, this, we just, I said last week I would give you a tour, and then we said, all right, we got to buy this stuff, the uh, wireless stuff, and uh, it works. So we can do more remote things. <laughs> I'm going to hold this for you. Uh, you can leave it in. Okay. doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Okay, let's go through some, <laughs> some of your comments now. Uh, let's see. <laughs> we can go all the way back, all the way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is great. <laughs> okay, you can hear me loud and clear, loud and clear, loud and clear. Yeah, so... Uh, you know, that's a little wireless transmitter, right? You use these for lectures, and then there's a receiver at the other end that feeds into my soundboard, which you saw, and it can go back out on the screen, stream. So thank you very much. Sounds better, actually, really. <laughs> uh, it's, it was louder, huh? Yeah, the remote, I can easily control the loudness. But look, at Dennis, our, our TV guy, said the levels were too high. Okay. But now we're back to the microphone. And... Um, Blair Witch video. Oh, that, yeah, it's all shaky, right? Oh, there was another video of the di of the creatures. Was that Blair Witch Project? I don't remember, but it was all handheld. I, I went to see it. I don't remember where, and I got too nauseous. I couldn't figure it. I couldn't finish it. It was just, just too nauseous. Uh, yeah, so, so Karen did the, uh, the camera work. I couldn't have done that myself. <clears throat> Uh, let's, I'm going to go through the tour questions first, then we'll get to virology. Okay. <laughs> yeah. YouTube award. More cowbell. Someone, someone sent the cowbell and said, you need more cowbell on, uh, Twitter. Yeah. We have quite a, a studio here, right? It's built up. I've been here for a couple of years now and we have built it up over time. Uh, Calliope loves the virus models. Those are very cool. You get to see them up close. Um, <laughs> you also like the bobblehead, yeah. <clears throat> I got a book called Fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. Well, I got fever on that shelf there. <clears throat> Bacteriophage teddy bear. <laughs> you should pitch it to FAO Schwartz. I don't know if they exist anymore, do they? I don't know. Uh, who's there with Vincent? That was Karen. So Karen is our studio manager and roadie, a road manager. So she comes and manages the tech in the studio and comes on the road with me. And uh, that's who that was. <clears throat> I liked the um, I liked the YouTube plaque. Like a lot of you were saying, it's a cool plaque. I personally like it. Karen doesn't like it, but I think it's a great accomplishment, right? The silver YouTube plaque. So you guys like it. <laughs> Focusing the vein, vein of videography. So that was a, a camera with an autofocus, and you can see it, it takes time. I think especially in low-light situations, it takes time for the, for the focus to kick in. <laughs> uh, and you guys, in case of emergency, break glass. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, my assistant, Karen. Actually, she's the studio manager, I would say. Uh, FH just finished a phone call, feeling kind of down, just logged in, and yay, it's office hours. We'll bring you up. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so those uh, that receiver, uh, Noir is Hollyland, yeah, and this is the receiver, and, and Hollyland. I just realized this morning it's like a, a take on Hollywood, right, but Hollyland's made in China. That's the receiver, and you need to put a big battery on the on the back. You can also plug the receiver into a USB power source. And that's fine because the receiver just sits here. But the transmitter goes with the camera, and you can't – you just need a big battery. We we have big batteries. We didn't realize it would go out in, like, 10 minutes. So that's fine. Yeah, Hollyland. <laughs> you would be fired from my – I don't fire. I'm very patient, and I work with people who – I try and make the right decisions to begin with, which you just never know. Um, 
<clears throat> and I try and teach people. It's all about teaching, right? That's what we do is about teaching and learning. And I think the people who are working here uh, learn. You know, nobody knows everything from the beginning. I'm still learning. I'm still learning this stuff. I'm still learning virology. So you wouldn't be fired. We'd be very patient. <laughs> okay, dokey. Let's see what else. I hope you like that. Uh, I like this studio very much, as you could see. Um, um, and there, there, we do play music all the time here in the studio. So we have speakers out there, and we don't always flash colored lights. But uh, I love EDM, so that's what was being played there. Um, and, yeah, it's kind of like a little party. <laughs> So if you come visit, we'll play the music uh, for you. <laughs> uh, Western Digital Reds. Yeah, you saw those on the editing desk. Um, I've been getting 10 terabyte uh, Western Digital Red drives to, to back up all of our shows because, you know, once they're published, I don't know if we're going to use them again, so I want to save them. And I have two. I have two drives for... for redundancy because one is not enough because if it goes you lose everything so you need redundancy yep virology rave yeah that's what it was <laughs> exactly virology rave and you know yes you should visit everyone someone came today michael came from new jersey and uh it, you know it's enjoyable because i can't stop talking and you'll have a good time so please do just send an email to uh, incubator at microbe.tv and we can book something Oh, fun, a tour. It just backed up and started over. Thanks once again for Microbe TV, not only because of what I learned, but also you have a great attitude about trying out technology for education. So that was a example, this wireless thing. I know people use wireless all the time, but we never did, and we wanted to try it for this. Now we have it, and we know what it can do. It's really cool. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> Behind the scenes, viravology, viravology, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what light you talking about the one that beats to the music? Oh that that's just from Amazon. You can it's it's a multicolor light that senses the the beat and it beats to it. It's uh if you want we can tell you exactly what we bought. But we need um we need a brighter one. It's not really that bright. Could use a gimbal mount. Yeah, I agree on the camera to to steady it. Absolutely. So you know, work in progress. <laughs> and yes, it uh, it has changed a lot since the studio warming. You know, we have a lot of different things here. And the most important is we have people here now working uh, on a daily basis. I love it. I love having people here. I was alone here for over a year. And while that's good in some ways, you don't, you don't develop by being alone. This has to be a joint effort. And yes, Dixon's watercolor is very cool. I really like it. We have some nice artwork here, and hopefully um, we'll, we'll keep getting more. Yes, the, the Parasitic Diseases book is available for free on the Parasites Without Border website, parasiteswithoutborder.com. Yep. Are the swivel chairs new? I don't remember them from September. No, they were here in September, I'm pretty sure. They came earlier in the year, yeah. No. Not actually viruses in the kitchen. Those are just artwork of viruses, right? And Peter wants New York pizza now. Yeah, there's a pizza place right on the corner down here. And there's a bagel place right below us also. <laughs> What's the poster next to the window? Oh, uh, I'm afraid we didn't focus on that. That's one of Dixon's old posters. It's about insects, things that go crunch in the night or something like that. Tour de Twiv, Yeah. Except we have more than TWIV, right? Uh-huh. How's the peaches shop across the street? Now, that one I haven't tried. You must have seen that in the video, yeah. Um, didn't I haven't tried it. Actually, I haven't bought any pizza around here, but Karen says the one on the corner here on this side of the street is good. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Thanks, Les. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. I need a larger computer monitor. Um, so you're talking about the one that's right in front of me now, right? So I don't think so because, um, well, it, it gets in the way of the camera. So 
here's the top of the monitor right where my finger is, see, tapping. And any bigger monitor would impinge on my view. And then if I move the camera back, then I get smaller. So this is a perfect framing in my view, right, Dennis? Not too much headroom, you know? And so this is a good size monitor. I mean, I, I do have a second one to the right if I have to spill over anything onto that, so that works. Um, <laughs> where's the fish tank? <laughs> The incubator is cool and cozy. I, I love it. This is my sanctuary. I'd love to come here and work. I, I, I wish there were a bedroom off the back room, right? That would be awesome. That was way cooler than I imagined. Was it Amy that found the location originally, or is my memory flaky? Yeah, Amy. So, so Daniel Griffin said, uh, we should rent a common studio space. And I said, okay. And you know me, I say, okay, and then I don't do anything. And unless it has to do with recording a podcast. So Amy heard it, and she started getting in touch with the realtors, and we looked at a few spaces, and we ended up here. So thank you, Amy, for, for getting us this space. Uh, it would be nice to see a shot of Karen. All right, well, call her in. Karen, when you get this message, come in, and you can stick your face on this camera here. I'm glad you guys liked it. Yeah, you remember when we were thinking about it. Yeah, that was a couple of years ago. It was in the beginning of the pandemic. Come here and show your face, Karen. People want to see you. Here, here's Karen. This is Karen, the incubator regulator. Oh, wait. She's back in her shirt. Uh, Microbe TV, crew member. Isn't that cool? Have fun. Thank you. Thank you for the video. It was good. Um, 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 um. I, always, I always imagined it being one room. No, it's, we're lucky. We have a good amount of space. We actually looked at a smaller space uh, next door, but we preferred this one. We need more space, right? You preferred the audio from my wireless setup. That's interesting. This is like, it's like a highly expensive, well, $300 mic. It's not that expensive. I wonder why you, you prefer the other. Uh, is it the volume that you prefer? Because I can pump the volume of this one up if you'd like but tell me what it is you prefer about the other one <laughs> june bug is watching while doing a water change on one of my aquariums wondering how many diseases i could be exposing myself to that's cool you sound far away from the mic no the the, the wireless mic is shut off so there's no way that that can be I can turn up the volume. All right, I just turned it up two notches. Tell me if you like that. Audio from wireless is more clear. All right, I just pumped it up two notches. Tell me if that's better. That was Karen, by the way. Karen is, is wonderful, has had a lot of good ideas for management. So, you know, the, the calendar and all... All the other people who are here are via Carol, uh, Karen. Um, I'm glad you like it. Cloverfield, yes. That's the video about the monsters in New York City. You never see the monsters. But it's all shot on handheld cam. Oh, my God, it's so bumpy. It makes you nauseous. Unbelievable. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, from dream to reality, we dreamed about having this. And here it is, and, you know, you folks are to, to be thanked for helping us. And I absolutely love it here. I get inspired. My creativity flows. And uh, I think you can tell that I'm, I'm very happy to, to be working here. I had 40 good years in um, Columbia in a lab, but now uh, I wanted to do something different, and this is it. I really like it, so thank you all. Mic volume is too low now. Well, I just turned it up. The wireless module audio was slightly over-modulated. <laughs> the fixed mic is a slightly muffled tone. Hmm. Um, well, you know, I don't do any EQ on this mic. I could. But, you know, I, I record all the podcasts here, and they're, they're very clear, right? And they're going through the, the same audio path as the... Um, as we're doing now, so I don't know why it's um, it's a problem. Uh, Rip DeComp from Taos, welcome. 
SRR, thank you for your contribution to science communication. Audio is better now. Audio from the wireless seemed to have more bass. That's funny because in my my earbuds, right, which I have here, uh, it sounded more tinny. This one has more bottom. <laughs> FAO exists. Okay. I don't want to deal with merchandising. I so maybe somebody in the studio in the studio can do it. <laughs> Yeah, the wireless is a Sennheiser. <laughs> uh, incubator regulator is Karen's official title. We thought that would be cute because an incubator has regulators, right? So there you go. Quite the Kona says, quite the contrast to the radio studio where I worked at Columbia's WKCR, which was a pile of papers and vinyl records. <laughs> Tom, Tim likes our lighting. Thank you very much. Could you recommend any online meetups for people interested in virology, neuroscience, molecular biology, et cetera? Well, we have our Discord channel, which has over 1,000 people, and there's a lively discussion there uh, all the time. Um, and, and how do you get to the Discord? Uh, maybe Les can give you a link. The lav mic has much more bass. That is weird. That's very weird. I mean, I like to please you guys, so I'm I'm just wondering. Anyway, we have a Discord channel. I'm sure there are many others. In fact, the moderator for the Discord channel, which is Microbe TV, uh, is a moderator for another big biology channel, and he could have suggestions for you, John. For I I think mo the Discords are great, right? They're it's basically an online chat room where you can talk about science. Uh, you need to do off-site backup as well in case there are plumbing or electrical problems at the incubator. That's right. And so we have both hard drives here. Um, and so what we are now transitioning to is one copy online, which itself is not perfect, right? But our recording software is called Riverside. We have a business package that lets us keep our recordings there forever. Now, you know, companies don't last forever. So we have one hard copy, uh, copy here and one copy there. Hey, can I still talk to you through the fan TWIV account about cooperation? Uh, I don't know what you mean by the fan TWIV account, but I'm happy to talk about cooperation. Absolutely. Lighting looks cool, but you don't like this, I know. Um, in fact, Noir didn't like it either. <laughs> She came into the studio, uh, TWIV 1000, and she went right up to it. And she said, Vince, I don't like this. You don't like that. I will put a, um, a cell on top of it, okay, Karen? Make a note. Let's put a cell on this and see if it's better. <laughs> funny, 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 funny. All right, we're getting through the audio comments. Am I the only one that likes the expensive mic? I like it too. On all the t all the recordings, you hear this, and I think it looks good. It sounds good. Yes. A gel. It's a gel. A gel. What did I call it? Over the light. A gel over the light. What did I call it? A, a cell. A cell? <laughs> okay, I don't know the the lingo of the business. It's uh, we have to put a gel over the light. There's not much of a delay, actually. Karen's watching the stream in the next room. Okay. Volume is fine. Audio is fine. Much better now that you pump the volume up. Okay, that's good. Uh, that is gain, actually. Um, it's on the channel strip that I have, which is like a preamp that the mics go into before they go into the board. It's a little complicated here, and I didn't know any of this. I just learned it by watching YouTube videos and, and listening to people who comment, and, and like Dennis, who used to send, still sends emails about the lighting and so forth. And yes, uh, audio files versus viral files. That's right. We have to be audio files. Karen, here's Karen. So this is her uh, moniker, the Karen Resistance. The wireless is a Sennheiser. Should never let them hear it. So. Now you're going to want that all the time, right? But I don't want to clip on a mic and use it like that. 
Maybe Michael says, I think people had their volumes turned too low because the wireless was so high. It was hot. And I didn't, I don't know what you're hearing, right? Because when I, yesterday when I tested the wireless, it sounded fine in my headphones. I have a level meter in front of me on the screen. It looks about where the other was. And the, the output of the wireless can be changed, right? And I didn't play with that, but it may be very hot. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, virologists. It's an audiophile podcast now. What are those speakers in the other room? Karen, what are the speakers in the other room? They are um, they are Bluetooth speakers, but um, the ones in this room, I don't know if you saw them at the editing desk. Those are um, those are wired speaker, XLR connected. Those are Yamahas. I don't know the model number. Yeah, and audio engine. Thank you. Speakers are audio engine. Karen picked them out. <laughs> okay, a backup in storage to audio engine. What's the mic I'm using now? This is a Heil. Um, what's the model? PR40. Heil PR40, H-E-I-L, which I like. I have three of them. I used to use them in this in the office at Columbia, so that's what it looks like, and it's a, of course it's XLR, and um, this is a two ninety nine each. And the reason I use this is that um, I was influenced by Leo Laporte, who did has many podcasts, right? He's a huge podcast empire on the West Coast. He's in Petaluma, and he used these, and he's and I just listened to him. That's what inspired me because he has this week in tech among others, and so I was, yeah, hey, I'm going to make this week in virology. So I got Hiles. But we have a lot of other mics here, too. They, they're all different, but I kind of like this quality for my voice. Yeah, we'll see. So SM7B is a wonderful mic. I don't have one, but I, I, don't, need, I don't think I need to be experimenting with mics. Yeah. And uh, let's see. We're getting into the... <laughs> We're getting into the virus talks questions. Steve says a red bandana on that light would be classic. Really? A red bandana would be classic. I, I have no knowledge of that, but yeah, we could put a red bandana on it. Here's the Discord server uh, address from Les. So there is a great, vibrant micro TV community, but you can talk to people and find other life science communities there as well, which are very good. Uh, what happened to your cool blue-rimmed glasses? Oh, they're still here, okay? They are inexpensive uh, from Amazon, right? And they're not great for seeing the screen, even though they look good. So I went to buy proper prescription glasses for the screen. And the lady in the store said, my face is too round for round glasses. I need to have rectangular glasses. I do like the the round glasses, and maybe some day I'll get back to them. <laughs> now we have these green ones, and these are kind of cool because boom, they they go and they won't break, right? Look at they can go pretty far. <laughs> so they're green. There you go. But I still have them. I still have them here. Maybe what you haven't seen are my regular glasses because I don't wear those for the computer screen. But I'll put them on to show you this. But these are, I, I really think these are amazing, right? They are blue and, and red and clear. What do they do, Karen? Are you leaving? Are you leaving? Are you leaving? No, no. Okay. You're watching no, on your phone. Watching. Try the Congo blue for the gel on the lamp. It's super deep blue with some red. Ah, cool. Bob Heil just died. Oh, my gosh. How about that? That's coincidence. That's um, uh, the maker of these uh, these microphones. You know, the other day I was talking to someone about Iris Apfel. I have a pair of glasses that at home that look like Iris Apfel's glasses. So I, I, I was talking to someone about it, and I went to search, and I saw she was dead. She had just died like March 1st at 100 and whatever, two. Oh, my gosh. 
Bob Heil also made the talk box effect used by Peter Frampton and Joe Walsh, among others. Well, you know, I have to say, I suddenly have, in the, in the 80s, I used to listen to a lot of punk rock, right? And all of a sudden, P, Gary Newman and PJ Harvey popped up on my YouTube, and I've been listening to them lately. Oh, my God, Gary Newman, how much electronica back then? Amazing. Anyway, we won't talk about that. Uh, Peter has a suggestion, a third backup on external hard drives and bring them home. My company had both local and remote servers crashed. So I I used to have them all at home, and then I brought them here. I don't want anything at home anymore. And I'm bringing in all the backups one by one because they're heavy. So um, we do have a storage facility where we could put one copy there, right? It's just across the street. So we could have one copy here. But the idea would be to get away from these spinning hard drives and keep one in the cloud and one on the hard drive. I got it, though. So here, uh, we tell Peter we will have a backup drive in storage eventually so they do not fret. I don't know if the backup, um, not the backup, I don't know if the storage facilities are so safe either. You know, it's the kind where you rent some little space and you put your stuff in it that you, you don't want in your house anymore and you, you don't want to get rid of, right? <sighs> <laughs> I like the idea of a gel, your willingness to try things. Or well. I will try anything that seems reasonable. Karen always suggests things to do. I'm always a game for trying new things. I think you have to be like that in all ways of life. I mean, I've been doing all this science stuff a long time, and I could be fixed in my ways, but I don't think that's how you teach people. I think you have to be flexible so that you learn and change every year. Mm-hmm. Okay, dokie. February 28th, um, Bob Heil died. I saw Gary Newman just before COVID. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> One hour talking about mics. I haven't been talking about mics for an hour. I've been talking about the studio. Come on, be nice. <laughs> I, I know there's a lot of mics sprinkled in here, but it's mostly uh, the studio. Am I a fan of the germs? I've never heard of the germs. But the germs are what we study, right? Viruses and bacteria and fungi. <laughs> Raphael says, I've been working on broadcasting for 22 years. Uh, <laughs> and I love that today. Anybody with good taste and a bit of practice can get a professional TV look and sound. Powerful advances in tech. You can. You just have to know how to use it, right? Because if you don't use it properly, it doesn't work. But I agree. And Artemis says, an artist friend once said, there's this thing called taste. <laughs> round glasses are not in this category. Iris Apfel had the greatest round glasses. You know, I think she had a lot of taste. But it's all personal, right? I happen to like the look of round glasses on me. So I had lots of them. I had these, which are slightly different blue from the ones I had at home. I had, and I'm sorry to talk about glasses for five minutes. I'll get back to viruses in a minute. I have these clear ones, which have a different look, and I would wear for Zoom meetings. I have the the other blue, but none of them look right. I mean, they don't magnify right because I just estimated it. And these are prescription based, and I can see beautifully this screen. So that's it. <laughs> Elton John <laughs> glasses. <laughs> All right, we're going to get to the virology now. Is there any subject that doesn't interest you, wouldn't intrigue you to learn about? Well, I'm sure there is. And I probably I haven't thought about it because I don't want to think about it, right? I'm pretty intrigued about everything. Um, you could start talking to me about... Hmm, <laughs> All right, we'll wear the blue glasses now and then. Larry says he misses the blue glass. I know. I miss them too. Okay. Uh, is there any subject that I that I can't think of one? Um, you know what? I'm not terribly interested in economics. Uh, I, 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 I mean, uh, you know, I never was good at balancing my checkbook for sure. And economic theory, not a big fan of it. I think it's a lot of voodoo stuff, but it's probably because I don't understand it. You know, I was in a room with Ben Bernanke uh, some weeks ago, and he's a very smart guy, and he can talk about a lot of things, but I, I, I not, I'm not into that at all. I don't want to really think about it. However, if something happened and I wanted to know about it, I would definitely learn about it because I, I like figuring things out. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, let's go up and do some. So it's nine o'clock. So I'll take your questions. I had a little mini lecture planned, but I think we'll, we'll take your questions. And then if we have time, we can uh, do the mini lecture. So all the way back to the beginning, Kang said, what triggers the innate immune system when there's a viral infection? Is it responding to viral antigens or debris left by cells damaged by infection? So this is a very good question. Topic of today's, this week's lectures. Monday was innate and intrinsic immunity, and today was adaptive. So cells have receptors that sense viral proteins. So on the surface, there are toll-like receptors that can sense viral proteins. Within the cell, there are a whole bunch of different kinds of receptors. Toll-like receptors, rig eye like receptors, uh, NLR receptors, and more. There's even receptors for DNA and RNA and protein. And they can sense a foreign molecular pattern, and that induces a series of events which culminates in the production of interferons. And the interferons then um, make cells uh, into an antiviral state. They induce other gene products that have antiviral properties. So that's the key is that there are receptors, which we call pattern recognition, excuse me, receptors in and on the cells that recognize uh, foreign materials. Now, you, you say viral antigens are debris uh, from cells damaged. So that's important also because uh, during these early hours in infection, the cells are sensing virus infection. They're making interferon in an attempt to uh, dampen viral reproduction. But the cells are also dying. They're undergoing apoptosis, and their pieces of dying and dead cells are coming off. And those are picked up by what are called antigen-presenting cells, like dendritic cells and macrophages. And they digest the protein and present the, pro the peptides on the surface of the cell. They go into the lymph node and present them to T cells. And if those peptides are foreign, then there will be a T cell that can recognize the peptide and it becomes activated and initiates uh, adaptive responses, which include T cells and B cells. So it's an important link between these early earliest innate responses and the adaptive response, this ability for these dendritic cells to pick up, sentinel cells, we call them, to pick up pieces of dead and dying cells. Even viral particles can be taken up and, and digested and sensed. Yeah, it's a good question. And we talked about that um, uh, Monday and today, in fact. All right. I, I know there were there are more questions here, so let me just scroll down. All right. Uh, do EHS Talent says, do the original three doses protect against severe disease, death, and hospitalization, or do we need updated COVID shots like the CDC lady said last week? It sounded like she wanted everyone boosted. Okay, so the bottom line is that in many people, especially people under, say, 65, maybe 70, the, originally, the original three vaccines, which were against the ancestral strain, the, the original SARS-CoV-2 virus, they will not prevent infection. They will most likely prevent severe disease and death. You might get a moderate infection. You might feel crappy as anything. Because now we have SARS-CoV-2 variants circulating that evade neutralizing antibodies. It just takes longer to dampen down the infection. We have to depend on T cells to help modulate that infection. And people over... 65 or 70, they, they, have, they have poor immune systems to begin with. So that, that, that reproduction is not going to be stopped like it would be in a younger person, so they can get sicker. And so that's why in them you should, as early as possible, give an antiviral like Paxlovid. Uh, or the alternative is, is to get the, uh, the vaccine which has the Omicron variant in it. And uh, that will give you, you know, t that will give you antibodies against that specific variant, and it will dampen the total amount of virus reproduction. Now, whether you need a, a second shot of that is not at all clear. The, the CDC said last week we recommend everyone get it, but there are zero data, as Paul had said on last week's. Beyond, actually, maybe it was released this week's Beyond the Noise. There's no, there are no data saying that this booster of the Omicron vaccine will be protective or helpful in any way. They're assuming it will be, right? 
because it's going to induce more antibodies and, and that should be better. But I, I don't think, and I think Paul agrees with me, that we should be making decisions about boosters without the data. Because what you risk doing is you recommend people to take a booster and it doesn't work and then they lose confidence in your recommendations, right? So, for example, we we rolled out the the Omicron vaccine. It wasn't called a booster. It was called a vaccine. It was a new vaccine this fall. We never did any studies to see if it was helping. I remember when it was rolled out, Paul Offit said, I hope they do studies to see if it works, and they never did. So you lose confidence in an agency where they don't get data that you need. So that answers your question. She wants everyone boosted, but I'm not going to, I got the, I got the one back in the fall. I'm not going to get this. I don't see any evidence that this is going to be useful. Okay. Vanity Nutrition says, thank you for the TWIV 259 link. In my developmental bio class, we were offered extra credit to write about INT1. It was discovered through study of MM, mouse mammary tumor virus in mice and renamed WNG because of its homology to Drosophila. That's right. And 259 was an interview with Jackie Dudley at the University of Texas, Austin, many years ago, as you can tell by the numbers. And um, she works on MMTV. So good. Glad it was useful. Always like to be helpful. The best thing you can do in my opinion, is to help someone else, to help another fellow human. And so, so think, think of this when, when people drop stuff in public, right? I, I often pick it up. People are very scared that you're going to steal their stuff, at least here in New York City. So I don't do it because <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to touch your stuff. People don't want your hands on their phone. But it's just a response to help someone, right? By the way, I have to tell you a story, a very sad story. I was walking down the street the other day, and there was construction. So they made people go from the sidewalk to the street, and they had cones set up to protect you. And this older lady with a cane, she was trying to get back on the sidewalk. And this, the sidewalks can be high here in Manhattan, you know, over six inches. And she tripped and fell. I felt so badly because of this damned construction. She hurt herself. Anyway. Um, let's see. Let's get to some more questions here. <laughs> okay, here's one where where Amy is included, and I think it's a good reason. What do you each think are the most promising approaches for a new polio vaccine? So hopefully um, Amy will answer there. But So this is a problem. We do need a new polio vaccine because the oral polio vaccines revert and cause polio. This is not good. But mucosal vaccines are good. IPV doesn't cause polio, but it doesn't give you mucosal immunity that's enduring. So we need to make new vaccines that are mucosal-based that do not revert or do not um, reacquire neuroinvasion or reacquire fitness, let's say. And we can't because the powers that be are telling us we have to stop doing polio research. Not me. I don't do any research anymore, but not any virus research. We can't do it because they say, oh, it's too dangerous to work on polio, which is BS because there's polio everywhere in the sewage and in, 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 in the environment. So why can't we have it in a laboratory where it's far more controlled? You're never going to get rid of all the circulating polio virus. So let us do polio research. Enough with the containment crap. You know why? Because they don't want to tell Bill Gates that his $18 billion investment in polio eradication is not going to work. We're going to have to vaccinate forever. We're going to have to make new vaccines. We're going to have to start working with polio again. The people at CDC are all gung-ho that we're going to get rid of this. No, it's not happening. Whew, sorry. I tend to get emotional about this stuff. I did I did work for 40 years on polio, polio, maybe a little bit less. Anyway, Amy, if you want to weigh in, just type it in. <laughs> Can she sue the city? Yes, she could. I hope she does. Because, or whoever the construction people were, because they had these crappy little cones and some yellow tape. You had to step down from the sidewalk onto the street. And then in the process of stepping back up again, she tripped and fell. 
And I know they knew it was serious because the the supervisor, the manager, came rushing over. He knew that this was going to be a, a show, an S show, as Amy would say. Even more. I turned it up already. Yeah. All right, so that's two more notches. Now it's too loud for me. And let's see, this is here. So I got a couple notches left. Tell me if that's better. Can you hear it over there? Is it on your phone? I can hear it fine, but some people say their volume's not. All loud. right, I, I cranked it up two more notches. Mm -hmm. All right, the, the um, Lancet article said the guy who had 217 COVID doses had no abnormal immune responses. And guess what? He had no indication of ever having COVID. Well, that's one way to continually boost your antibody and T cell levels. So um, you don't, but I don't think you need 217 doses to do that, frankly. I don't think beyond three or four or five are you going to see any increment, but it would be interesting to see if there, there were boosts. Hmm. <laughs> this is very interesting. A nano aquarium would be nice. So Ian Lipkin had a little nano aquarium on his desk. You can buy these at Amazon. You can raise shrimp in them. Really tiny, tiny shrimp, right? They're kind of intriguing. I like that. Uh, Uracil 87. Are PFAS really that dangerous? I don't know. But... <laughs> What is uracil 87? What is that a base in the tRNA? Please tell me. I'm, I'm really curious. <laughs> I'm glad he had no negative outcomes. That's good. <laughs> All right. Nebby says, are those of us who had the measles vaccine as young kids in the 60s still protected? I'm concerned about being exposed in my county in Florida. So, hmm. You probably should get a booster. It's a long time, and um, you know. More recently, they've they've been doing two doses in kids, although that may be for the mumps component. Um, you should talk to your physician about that. Or actually, we could. Why don't we ask Daniel? That's a good question for Daniel. But let's Nebby send a, an email to Daniel at microbe TV and say. Ask this question. I think this is a good question um, because I can't copy this here. I would copy it and paste it into my um, – tomorrow is the, the TWIV clinical update. So that would be good. I like that. Okie dokie. What else do we have here? <clears throat> now we're talking about microphones, which I guess was an hour. Here we go. Here's another one. Can mRNA – can spike protein, SARS-CoV-2 spike, get expressed by the thyroid and lead to autoimmune conditions, which is less likely with Novavax? Well, first of all, I don't know why you would get autoimmunity by just making the spike protein. And, and the, it could be expressed everywhere. And why the thyroid would be an issue, I, I'm not sure. So I've never seen any indications that this is an issue. In theory, it could be, but I, I don't know any data which says that it happens, right? And that's what we always look for, evidence for whatever speculation we're making. Less likely with Novavax <clears throat> because the protein persists uh, less time. So that would be a prediction, but, but many fewer people are getting Novavax, so it's a hard comparison to make. Um, but I don't see it seen with mRNA vaccines at all. Not, not really. So, but I agree it's theoretically possible, but I don't see any evidence for it. Okie dokie. What else do we have here? Teddy bear, my sly. If I recall, Tom says the polio genome is 38 feet. I pestered Ann Palmerberg with that question at ASV 2022. A lot of it done during Badger football games back in the day. So uh, Tom is referring to this uh, polio genome, which is spilling out of the particle behind me, which is beaded. I showed you that on the video tour. Each bead represents a base, and she put them all in the right order. 
38 feet. Well, I don't know, because I've never stretched it all out to measure it. It's pretty long. And she said she did it during sports events. And she said, including the World Cup, she used to do that. Because she had made one of rhinovirus genome, and I had visited her and saw it. And I said, this is great. I'd love to have one for polio. And she said, I'll make it for you. And then two years later, it came. <laughs> Very cool. What else do we have here? Redundancy in everything. Nature knows that. Have spare batteries always. We did. In fact, we had a spare battery. And um, thank you for that, though. <laughs> I'm glad you liked the tour. It's cool. Uh, okay, that's that. We already went through that. I'm scrolling here. Parasitic diseases, swivel chairs, <laughs> and the um, incubator is beautiful. You sound far away from your mic. Online meetups, so the Micro TV Discord channel, right? Mm. <laughs> a gel. We're going to put a gel on top of the light. And more of talking about microphones. <laughs> uh, do endosomes. Here we go. It's a science question. Do endosomes have different toll-like receptors in the cell surface? If yes, how so? When it looks like the endosome just pinches off from the surface, does it help to imagine endosomes in 3D than 2D? So, yes, in general, the, the endosome interior should have um, cell plasma membrane receptors. They um, th There can be selective incorporation into endosomes, which would change the abundance um, but yeah, the like toll like receptor three can be on the plasma membrane and in endosomes. So the answer is yes. Does it help to imagine them in 3D? It always helps to do that, but for the plasma membrane, they're going to get incorporated because the endosome membrane originates right from the plasma membrane. So whatever is in there can be incorporated, although it doesn't have to be. Heather S. Treated first measles case in this ER in the ER this weekend six year old refugee arrived to Canada ten days prior hmm. had comorbidities so was told in the country of or origin not to vaccinate so I wonder where the infection was picked up uh, yes yeah, so pull off it said today that um, we're going to uh, by Karen you see how I'm selecting the the comments and then they appear on the stream I, I, I wanted you I wanted you to it's see this where I get to watch. So you see, these are the comments that are showing up in Ecamm right here. And when I click on one, like Heather, for example, it shows up, and then it goes into the stream, Perfect. the video itself. Otherwise, it's just on the on the right side of the stream. Perfect. So, you know, whatever pr platform we use has to have this capability, mm -hmm. right? And you get all kinds of other information here, like how many, p how many likes are up here, right? Um, okay, go then, back to the six-year-old because you left everyone. Uh, well, that's just an experience. So she treated her first case, and then this is part two. Rest of the family vaccinated, no illness. The patient had extensive rash, pneumonia, and dehydration. Needed oxygen and IV fluids on the men's now. Um, three out of three, our PEDS team will be talking to the family about getting the rest of the child vaccines, like polio, once he's recovered. Exactly, because now the, the child's immune memory is erased that he's had or she's had polio. So you have to revaccinate. And, of course, they'll have to reacquire any in immunity from infections that they had for which there's no vaccine. So this is the problem with getting measles. You don't want to get it. It's silly not to be vaccinated against it. That's interesting. And I think you're going to have more of these uh, cases because, as Paul said today, you know, there's been a backlash against mandated immunizations. Now, people don't want to get any immunizations, and the first ones to go are or for schools. So some states are, are restoring religious exemptions to vaccines. So they get around the school requirement. And now the first virus that's going to cause outbreaks is measles because it's so contagious. And that's what we're seeing throughout the U.S. It's just crazy. 
Here's a, a comment by Rip DeCamp. Thank you for your 40 years. So appreciate your career move. I'm still a tile stone brick mason since 1980. But now, according to Mark Martin, a microbe knot. That's great. I'm really happy that you're listening. Right? Tile stone brick masons actually useful, Vincent. Tile stone and brick masons are very useful, of yes. course. <laughs> and as opposed to me, who have no, <laughs> I have no use. <laughs> exactly right. Um, let's see. Yes, that was the end of that one. Do you know about this red bandana on the, on this light? Is that a classic thing uh, that you know about, Karen? Uh, you would see. Uh, no, do people do that? <laughs> it's a seventies thing. Okay. I don't know. Classic. All right. Truth or Dare says I continue to see people insisting that viral load is related to disease severity. I recall you saying many times it only relates to chance of infection. Still true or new data? It's still true because what they're do they're talking about viral load is is measured by PCR, and that does not give you uh, an accurate indication of the amount of infectious virus that's present. So. Um, it it doesn't tell you anything about disease severity. In fact, disease severity, severe COVID, is largely an inflammatory disease that happens after virus replication has occurred, right? So it doesn't even make sense to say that more virus, more severe disease, because you have, remember, you have the viral phase, the first seven days or so, where the virus peaks and goes down, and then you have an inflammatory phase and that's where the most severe disease happens, and it's independent of viral load. Although I, I would agree that perhaps having a lot of virus, say in the beginning you don't have an interferon response. Maybe you make antibodies against interferon. So virus replication can go out of control. That could lead to a greater inflammatory response. But that's not the general case. That's for people with antibodies to interferon. So in, in general, I would not say viral load is related to disease severity because the severity is a consequence of the inflammatory disease. Hmm. All righty. Oh, yeah, I hope there are no sequelae for that measles case. Yeah, so this rare degenerative disease, subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, um, that can happen, you know, six to ten years afterwards completely irreversible and fatal. And, and we're going to have some people on to talk about SSPE uh, in the coming weeks. And Karen's going to do a, a real-time installment of a gel. Someone says bandanas are flammable and we shouldn't use them. Yeah, that's cool. Do you like that, folks? It, it, it loses the sense of the lamp, though, you know, but fine. I'm willing to, if it makes people's eyes feel better. So. You can turn down the the brightness. There's a knob. Not about that. It's the whiteness of it against all your other pretty. Okay. Okay, folks. How do you think of that? There's a real-time response to your comments. <laughs> now you now you can't see the bobblehead anymore, but that's oh, fine. Oh, yeah. That's all right. Don't worry about it. it. Don't worry about it. It's still pretty bright. <laughs> you can put it on your shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mm. Round glasses. That's very funny. With all measles outbreaks, are people like myself still protected after 55 years? So that's what you should answer. Um, that's what you should ask Daniel. And, and if you don't send it in, I will. <clears throat> I will send it myself. Uh, Visto says, does measles spread before symptoms? Yes, it does. Um, and, and we have an upcoming lecture on acute infections where I show the curve, uh, the, the incubation curve for, for measles. And yeah, there is a period of shedding before you get the rash. So kids who are, are infected with measles and go to school, they can transmit it uh, during that incubation period. Remember, the incubation period, as we talked about last time, is the period... Uh, where virus is reproducing in you before you feel symptoms, before you feel anything. Virus is reproducing, your immune system is responding, but before you may feel anything, that's the incubation period. And you may or may not shed virus depending during that period and be contagious depending on the virus. <clears throat> this is a great question, by the way, Ari, Ari Ozone. 
Is there any subject that doesn't interest you, wouldn't intrigue you to learn about? I even think, you know, I, I kind of ragged on econ economics, but I, I would probably like to learn more about it, right? Um, you know, wine making, beer making, cheese making. Sports. I don't want to know about sports. Although, <laughs> maybe the science behind sports would be an interesting podcast. <laughs> Many of you think so. So I'll listen to that podcast and see. But I don't want to watch sports. I don't want to learn why someone is good at a certain sport. Although the underlying physiology could be interesting. Right? I mean, we are doing a sports, I don't know, more like an exercise podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you say to someone who misses the blue glasses, Karen? I do too. <laughs> You don't like these? No, I like those. I just the the blue glasses are bright and they're fun and they make you uh, stand out with the rest of the lighting and they're just fun. Well, these are really cloudy, so I have to uh, wipe them up first before. But we can uh, get non-round blue glasses if if that's what you're going for. Well, I think the the shape of these is interesting, but you know, Artemis said uh, round glasses are are no t are not tasteful. So I don't know. I can't please everyone. You right? will never please everyone. I'll wear these for the rest of this uh, this this stream. Am I going to do a mini lecture? You already did it. That was from before. No, I didn't do a mini lecture. You didn't. No, but let's see how many questions um, we have. Any update on the spread of measles? Well, as of last Friday, that's the last time I looked. There were additional cases in additional states. I don't know. To, on Twiv Friday, we'll update it. But I don't know. <laughs> Frank says, after flushing, how long should one wait before bringing the toothbrush to brush? <laughs> that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, I think you have to let all the aerosols settle, right? Which probably is is within an hour, but we should ask Michael Schmidt. He Michael Schmidt uh, is the person to ask about that. And How long me, do you? I leave it in the bathroom. I don't care. I like exposure to microbes. I think it's good for you. <laughs> I have to make a few sticky notes here. I already did the one about uh, which. Daniel. So I need a sticky note on how long after flush bring toothbrush. Back to the bathroom. You know, the thing is, if you have your own bathroom and it's just your family there, it's you got their microbes already. The key is in a hotel when there have been other guests in the bathroom before you and, and they don't properly sanitize the toilet, then you should keep your toothbrush out of there until you need to use it. But the question is how long, right? Yeah, it's a good question because most people get up in the morning, flush the toilet, and then they brush the teeth, right? So there you go. Okay, thanks for your perspective on serious disease protection in three doses. It's been one of my questions. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, here's more guidance on having a booster when you're over 60 of MMR. So we'll ask Daniel that tomorrow. Yeah. An Andrew says, for a virus to replicate, a cell needs to be susceptible, permissive. Do any vaccines treat the permissive environment as a strategy? I would say that, yeah, attenuated infectious vaccines do that because they are selected to be less fit and they reproduce more poorly because of limitations that could be inside of the cell. So they may be exploiting reduced, per, uh, not reduced permissiveness, but the restrictions of a cell imposed now by mutations introduced into the viral genome. So... I think some attenuated vaccines probably do that. Yep. <clears throat> uh, John from Minneapolis donated via link this week. The past two virology lectures were much more approachable for me. I wish you had a visible pointer on the slides to highlight where you are. I know. So the, well, thank you for your donation first. Really appreciate it. And, and the, um, the problem is I'm standing in a room with a, with a laser pointer, right? at the screen for the students. And then my laptop is recording the slide presentation. So you never see the laser pointer and I could go through later and add annotations. It would take me hours per lecture. I just don't have the time to do that. So maybe Karen has a, a suggestion. I, you could come to every lecture and, and record it 
with a camera, and that would capture the laser pointer. But that's too much work. I don't want to do that. So I try and be as descriptive as possible, right? But I think that's the best we're going to do. Uh, Lavis is from Colombia. Hello, Lavis. Nice to see you again. Uh, what about IPV followed by a round of OPV? Well, that doesn't... You still need to inject the IPV, right? So I I don't... You know, OPV is not going to give you uh, uh, unending mucosal protection anyway. So at that point, I don't think you need uh, a dose of OPV. If Bill Gates had spent $18 billion on portable refrigeration for polio vaccines, would that have been a better investment? Uh, no, I, I think that we have a good investment in, in the cold chain already. He spent $18 billion on mainly manufacturing and distributing the vaccines and responding to outbreaks. But the, the vaccine, the OPV that's used, is simply not good enough to uh, achieve what we want to do, and that is to eliminate poliomyelitis because the vaccine causes it. So we need to stop using it. But someone needs to tell Bill that we have to do something else, and I think no, everyone's afraid to tell him. You know, he has a spokesperson who I will not name who is always very gung-ho Although if you listen between the lines, he admits that there are big problems with the uh, eradication effort. So, Let's see. Sylvia, thank you very much for your contribution to science communication. <laughs> we appreciate it. Sylvia uh, had visited the incubator and, and left some memorabilia, which I showed to our visitors today. So thank you very much for that. Why do so many people get a bad reaction after Shingrix lasting several days? I got my second dose last week. The next day I had a horrible headache, 48 hours. I never get headache. Uh, so I think it's the adjuvant that is in Shin, the Shingrix vaccine that it doesn't go well with many people, right? So I had two doses of Shingrix and had just like a six-hour fever for each one, and that's it, no headache, nothing else. But other people like you do do much worse. And I think that's illustrating that everyone's immune response is different. And I suspect it's the adjuvant that is, which is causing inflammation to make you get a better immune response to the vaccine, right? It induces inflammation in its own. And that can be the problem because when you get inflammation, you're making soluble proteins at the injection site, which then get into your circulation and go everywhere, including your brain. And that can give you headaches, it goes to your muscles, it gives you muscle aches and so forth. It's not as bad as shingles. It is not as bad as shingles itself. That can be painful. But I had shingles many years ago and it wasn't very painful, but it varies, right? Again, everybody is different. Every human being is different. And every cell within you is different. Did you know that? Every cell within you has a slightly different DNA sequence. How hard is it to get measles antibody checked versus just getting a shot? <clears throat> I'm not sure we know what level of antibody would correlate with protection. Um, but that's another question for Daniel. How, writing you're writing it down. The flush question is for Michael Schmidt tomorrow because we're doing TWIM. John says, the 217 doses reminded me of something Brianne or someone said, all the vaccines you get over a lifetime is dwarfed by something else. All the infections you get over your lifetime. I think that's what she said. You get many more infections than you get vaccines. Mm. <laughs> oh, my God, an accurate RNA sequence in beads. That, beads. that is dedication. Yeah, she did that for a long time for me. I really appreciate it, Anne. It's very cool. And uh, Yvonne was here, and he saw that, that beaded thing. <laughs> Brush teeth in the kitchen. I don't think you need to do that. I think that gets a bit much. I think eventually the aerosol settles. And again, if it's your bathroom, it's not a big deal because you getting your own microbes is not a problem. It's in the hotel that it's a problem. And frankly, I always leave my toothbrush uh, in the hotel, I have a little cover on it, and I put it in my my cosmetic baggy thingy, and I think that's plenty. Can you bead up an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase to replicate the genome? Yes. 
<laughs> of course, a beaded polymerase would re definitely replicate a beaded RNA. Absolutely. Siddhartha, nice to see you again. Thank you for your support of science uh, communication. Siddhartha was at TWIV 1000. I met Siddhartha. It's good to meet you. If Daniel could return as a guest on Office Hours, he could catch up on all our vaccine questions. Okay, we will have Daniel back. Uh, we're not going to have uh, an episode next week, but the following, in two weeks, I'll see if I can get Daniel back on. That would be fine. And now we're talking about the light. <laughs> Vanity doesn't like the color. It's fine. It's a 5,000K gel. Is that a 5,000K gel? I have no idea. It's the only gel we have. It's the only gel we have. Is that like love the one you're with or yes. something? <laughs> Gel turns lamp into a moon-like image. That's fine. You know, it's a change. We'll get a different color. We have a different color gel here on this lamp. Maybe we have to swap them. Now the light looks like you're under a microscope. Oh, that little bobblehead there. Don't point the light at us. It's not pointed at you. <laughs> And look at this. You can't please everyone. I liked it the way it was, attractive and decorative. It's funny that everyone has uh, their own um, opinions. Now, Karen, shut it off, right? <laughs> okay. Do you folks, do you, do you prefer it shut off? Because if you like it shut off, I'll do that. And everyone says it's bright in my eyes, but I'll do whatever Vincent wants. No, you don't, you don't have to go there. Um, uh, if, you, if you like it off, tell me. And we will keep it off. Not doesn't matter that I like it. Shedding before symptoms is a key for a successful virus. Absolutely. So com that's community spread, where you're out and about and shedding. That's why SARS-CoV-2 spread so effectively, because you shed for days before you feel that you should stay home, right? And uh, the Ebola virus doesn't do that. It doesn't shed during the incubation period. So less of a problem. Uh, John says, I saw an article about a plant revived from a seed about from 32,000 years ago and consequently fear from people, but wouldn't any pathogens not survive or be tightly controlled and maybe eat, not even fit? It's hard to know. That's a good question, which we also uh, put to thawing the permafrost. So, uh, you know, we can find old viruses in the in the permafrost, which are ice cores taken from you know, the permafrost in Siberia and so forth. And that's slowly thawing. So the question is, are there going to be release of viruses? Since there were viruses that are infectious in the fr frozen water, in the ice, are, are viruses going to be released that are going to be a threat to us? And I don't know. We, we, we can't know ahead of time, right? We can't stop the thawing. It's going to happen. So I guess all we can do is monitor it and see what comes out of the thaw. But, you know, it really depends what was frozen there weren't many people around then in those areas, so mostly animals, and whether if any of their viruses are going to be a problem. I just think you don't know, and you can be scared, but that's no way to live your life, right? So it's an interesting question. But they may not be fit. They may not be able to infect us. Who knows? Remember, the reason bats harbor viruses that occasionally spill over into us is because the viruses are multiplying actively and generating many, many mutants, one of which is ready to infect people just by chance, randomly, right? And there's no multiplication in the permafrost. They're just sitting there. So in my opinion, it's less likely that they're going to jump into people. Uh, the new glasses do suit you, but the blue ones were unique and fabulously quirky. I like fabulously quirky. Mm -hmm. That's good. And Wayne says, when I see them, I half expect you to sing about Princess Da. I know who you're talking about. <laughs> Clinical update with Dr. Daniel Griffin. Can he go over all of us born in the 50s and 60s? What vaccines, boosters? So we'll bring him on. We'll bring him on and he can do that. But you have to come and ask him questions, okay? Because if I, if I bring him on and four people come, it's not nice. But he, you usually come up in, in droves like 300 people. Uh, and right now, actually, the likes and, and people here are equal. So thank you very much for hitting the like button. My grandma disapproves of the blue grass, glasses. She Is she watching? She doesn't like them? What do you, what do you think? If, I, I think you're never going to make everyone happy. Hmm. 
So you should just do what you want to do. So, so the presence of Karen here, you know, did you ever see, um, what's his name? Harold, Howard Stern. He had a, a lady who was kind of a foil. He would ask her questions. Now, that's how I, I view Karen sitting here. We could get you a camera and you could sit and I could ask you questions and you could comment now and then. That would be fun now and then, right? And Karen's quiet. <laughs> Karen is quiet. Okay, never mind. No, no, maybe just a microphone. They don't need to see me. Okay, you don't want to be seen. No. You're far more interesting with your backdrop. Jay wants to know if hepatitis A causes liver lesions. Yes, it does. Of course, it causes hepatitis, liver lesions. Um, but it's an acute infection, and it does not lead typically to liver cancer. That's hep C and hep B, right? Those are the two that cause long-term persistent infections, and that leads to hepatocellular carcinoma. Yeah. Oh, Questella is back with her whack flu from last week. It finally went away. It took two weeks. Still get headaches. Uh, whack flu. Do you remember whack flu? <laughs> <laughs> She's saying, I had all these body aches I never had before. And I said, that happens. I know that happens. No fever, though. I had no fever. Remember? With the flu? You just had body aches. Right? All it, it was, body aches is not a fair thing to say. It was excruciating physical pain. Okay. That's not body aches. I got it. All right. Artemis says she likes my round glasses. Okay. Sorry. I thought you said you they had no taste. Maybe you said that Iris, Ad, what's her name? Iris Adris. I forgot her name now. Let me look it up. Iris Apfel. Iris Apfel. She had big, 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 big round black glasses. Maybe you didn't like those, but I'm glad you like mine. I don't brush my teeth in the toilet, uh, Visto says. Well, I hope you don't brush them in the toilet. You mean in the bathroom. Okay. That's fine. Well, you know, in some countries, the toilet is in a separate room from the rest of the bathroom. I've been to many countries. Japan is one of them. So you have a bathroom with a sink and a shower or whatever. And then the toilet is in its separate room, which kind of makes sense, right? For toothbrushes anyway. So that's the answer, folks. Rebuild your houses to have the toilet in a separate room. <laughs> uh, and everybody's now um, talking about that. And like Will says, I now put my toothbrush in the drawer <laughs> because of our conversation. I promise Questella says hotels don't properly clean anything. They don't clean most of the things. I asked someone today if they wash the sheets. Do you know if hotels wash sheets? Yeah. They do? Okay. Comforters, no. I understand that. Yeah. They never clean the blankets or coffee pots. That's probably right. That's probably right. <laughs> Tony keeps toothbrushes in the kitchen. Wow. I And Christella says, I worked at a hotel long enough to get fired for taking too long because I was actually cleaning stuff. That makes sense, right? New cases have UV for sterilizing toothbrushes. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My class with Vincent in 21 was online. Those may show the cursor. Yeah, I did do an online class, and I used the cursor, and that was recorded into the videos, which are still up. But they're not, you know, that was a couple of years ago now. So it's um, it's out of date somewhat. Not totally, but somewhat. Okay, what else here? Headaches after Shingrix. Hotel rooms, adjuvant, which I don't understand. Mm. Patricia said, I think most labs will draw antibody titers. Are you from Canada or, or the UK? Because you spell titers like that. Uh, but your insurance might not pay unless you have a physician's order. Yeah, that's probably true. We'll ask Daniel, though. Every cell in your body has a different DNA sequence. What? Yes. <laughs> because DNA polymerases make errors. And they are products of, of DNA synthesis where the previous two cells made DNA and divided. So they have slightly different sequences. I mean, the DNA is very long, right? It's 3.2 billion base pairs. And the, the error rate of a DNA polymerase is one mistake in a million base pairs. So that's a lot of mistakes from cell to cell. You're a mosaic Daniel, we're all mosaics. 
Uh, let's see. We're reaching the end here, it looks like. But I'm not going to do a mini lecture. It's too late. <laughs> I'm hearing myself being repeated. It sounds really good. The yeah. microphone sounds good. I think you're trying to calm down. Can't please everyone, so you might as well please yourself. Um, pleasing you pleases me. That's how I please myself. I'm doing this. Well, there are two reasons. I'm doing it to teach all of you, and that's the primary objective. Uh, but I also learn myself. In teaching, I learn because I get questions that I haven't thought of before. So that's what I get pleasure from. I don't need to have a light on. I'll get used to not having it on. It's fine. It was on for a year. <laughs> Silvio Pina likes it off. Okay. Off is better, but I like the blue too. A Congo blue would be better. We'll experiment, okay? Tell we'll get a. I wrote down Congo blue. If we wrote down Congo blue, we're going to try it and see what it looks like. <laughs> I got Shing Craig says I got Shingrix RSV and COVID shots all at once last fall. Got fever and such for a day. Would the adjuvant for Shingrix have also boosted the effect of the other shots? Well, if you if you got them in the same arm, right? I think if the shots were in different arms, the it's too far and it would be too diffuse by the time you got there. You want to have local adjuvant that really causes local inflammation inflammation, not at a distance, right? So if you had them in the same arm, then, they, yeah, it could be, because they usually put the needle in very close to the previous one, I think. Could be wrong about that. Thank you, Abdul Aziz, for your contribution to science communication. We appreciate it. Uh, can you ask Daniel if a child can receive early MMR if there's a reason? And does it count as one of the two doses or as an extra? You can ask him, how early are you thinking? Can you write that down? Are you writing it down? How early can children... Can it get MMR vaccine? Uh, Visto asks, how long ago was it that human endogenous retroviruses were active? Herves in the permafrost. Um, hundreds of thousands of years. So um, they, they would they could be there if there were humans, right? There would have to be humans... I... I Maybe there even the remains frozen in there, which is not un, unreasonable. That could have happened. But, uh, yes, hundreds of thousands of years ago, they were active, and um, which means replicating and making infectious viruses. Right now, they're no longer making infectious viruses. But it's not even clear that that would be an issue, right? We just don't know. Uh, Rainey says, Micro TV, Penny, for your thoughts about CDC's lifting of the five day COVID quarantine and relegating COVID in the same pile. So, according to Daniel, um, <laughs> according to Daniel, they haven't actually officially announced it unless they did since uh, last week's recording, and in which case I'll hear tomorrow. But he said last week the press has been saying they're going to make this recommendation, but when you Ask CDC, they say no comment. It was the last, if you noticed the last minute of the TWIV clinical update. I, I said, thank you, Daniel. He says, thank you, and everyone be safe. And normally we cut right into the music. and But that time I said, really, no comment? And he laughed. <laughs> so they don't, haven't officially announced it. And so it's not clear where that has come from. Robin something, a stern sidekick. Yeah, Robin, that's right. I think a Robin could be interesting now and then. So she, she sits here and makes, you know, I ask her questions. She could have a mic. You don't have to do it every week, but you could do it now and then. I would be here every week so for you. Peter says, every yeah, get week. Karen a mic. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, blue glasses are fabulous. I think they're a little too light. I have a pair at home that are darker. I'll bring those in for the next live stream. Uh, Johnny Carson and Ed McMahon, same kind of, but that was more continuous banter, right? More continuous banter. He doesn't want me to talk that much. Uh, you can, but the, <laughs> you know, the point is to teach people, right? Right. Fitzgerald says, I work at the Simon Lab. Oh, I got an email from you, Fitzgerald. It would be great to see Viviana back on TWIV. Yes, uh, that would be fun. I just saw Viviana talk last week. Uh, up at uh, Columbia, and uh, yes, I would I would like to have her back to talk about that. 
Oh, so Andrew's grandma, she's not watching right now, but we watch Twiv together and she always comments on the blue glasses. She does like you, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad she likes me and just doesn't like the blue glasses. So maybe this clue, this the solution is to take them and switch them every five minutes, right? Yes. Robin Quivers, that's her name. Yes, she was always fun. She sat kind of off to one side and she would make comments now and then. It sort of kept him in line and so forth. Yes, Iris Apfel, may she rest in peace. <laughs> it was the taste of the optician that I was dubious about. So the optician I went to, or the opti uh, yeah, optician, right? That's the right name. But she said, my face is too round for round glasses. The funny thing is I've worn round glasses for the last 40 years, and I always liked them. Not this round, but almost. And so she said, I need to wear more rectangles. She said, they look fabulous on you. And when someone says they look fabulous on you, what are you going to do? They know. They actually have an interesting look, don't they? I think it's a good shape for you. See, she said it's a good shape, and she's not even an optometrist. But I'll wear this for the rest of the stream. We'll alternate it. Also, my head is too round for round glasses. But you're not wearing round no, glasses. No yeah. rectangles for that reason. Oh, thank you, Rima. We love you, Vincent. We love, I love all of you. Let me make a... Uh, Actually, do it with the middle fingers. It's harder. There you go. A little love thing. Can you do it with the middle fingers and not the thumbs? The thumbs is easy, but the middle fingers is really hard. And if you have long, flexible fingers, it's easy to do. Thank you, Rima. I really appreciate it. Uh, Raphael says, as the old Q&A Amy once said, <laughs> some people are trying the Carson's Karnak Act, guessing what would happen with COVID in the coming months. So funny. Yeah, Amy was used to said in, in answer to a question, well, I don't know. I, I haven't put the envelope to my head yet. Should I do that? <laughs> um, regards from Chris. He says to put ethanol or Purell on your toothbrush head to keep it clean. Purell. Oh, that would taste horrible, wouldn't it? Or I guess you could rinse it off, right? Yeah. The ethanol. What about, what about using uh, um, Everclear? What's that? What's Everclear? It's alcohol. Why don't you have a glass of bourbon in your bathroom exactly. and keep the toothbrush in the, in the bourbon? bourbon? Yes. Just keep it in there. And that way when you brush your teeth, you get a little buzz or whatever your your beverage of choice is. But you have to use it. Actually, bourbon is it not. be a high enough proof. What proof is bourbon? You're a bartender. You know the answer to that. Uh, I don't know. How can you not know? I don't know. It's bourbon. <laughs> I don't know what bourbon is. But it has to be 70% ethanol, which would be 140 proof. I don't think which bourbon. Is tequila or Everclear. Some of these rums from Jamaica oh, yeah. are uh, rum, rum. overproof. Is that would like, taste better, too. Um, so anyway, you could do that. Mm. <laughs> so, so Patricia says gel for a lamp. It's, they're called gels, but they're pieces of, what are they, cellophane or something? Gel. Plastic. Pieces of gel. So it's not, it's not liquid, as you might be uh, imagining. Uh, okay. So Tom got free here for the whole show because his flight, flight was delayed. So thank you, Tom, uh, for moderating tonight um let's see do you know the average number of base pair changes between the virion that infected you and the ones you shed in SARS-CoV-2 I know for polio between the time you ingest it and the time it comes out your your bum it changes five percent so you five percent of 7,440 bases uh the the number for SARS-CoV-2 is out there I, I don't know it. It's a good question. I, I will ask it. Um, I will look into it. How many, how much does uh, SARS-CoV-2 change within an individual, within host mutation? That's the question. <laughs> okay. CDC did lift the five-day isolation this week. Okay. Um, so, so Daniel said there was no science behind that. That was his comment. Even though know, last week he said, they didn't lift it yet, but there's no science behind it. So he said they're trying to get people, people's lives back to normalcy, right? Because it's really crazy to have to do that. And that's more, um, more about social activities than about the science and the public health. So that, he said that's what CDC has to balance. That's all from um, Daniel's mouth. You can go listen to last week's TWIV clinical update. So here, here, Evan says, Karen on the mic would be awesome. Aww. Patricia says, I think the CDC recommendation stinks. 
<laughs> we need to take a vote on the light and the glasses. So some people, no, <laughs> no gel. Noir doesn't want any gel. But Noir, you didn't like the light. You wanted it turned off. I can't, I can't, uh, uh, well, I'm not going to win, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious about what looks good. That's all. Uh, Ray's 11 says, I heard a TED talk from a Danish virologist claiming OPV has secondary effects protective against parasites and other infections. IPV has a negative effect. I don't know about IPV having a negative effect, but certainly there's this idea that OPV boosts some nonspecific immunity for a couple of months and protects you against other viral infections. I don't know about parasites, but that's the basis for... So Kostya Chumakov grew up in the Soviet Union. His mother was a virologist, and she gave him OPV 60 times during his childhood, you know, five times a year, and she claimed that it prevented other infections. And in fact, at the beginning of COVID, Koishi was trying to get a trial for for using OPV to mitigate COVID for a few months, but that, that never happened. So there is something there. There are papers published on it. I don't know about IPV being negative, though. All right, it's 10 o'clock. Time to uh, wrap this up. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Toothbrush and bourbon or gin might do with a splash of vermouth. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds really good. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. I'm not blocking questions. There's no lab leak. Okay. If you want to ask me a question about a lab leak, there was no lab leak. Zero. I'm the virologist. I know this. So I'm not answering any questions about it because it doesn't happen and it's not a thing. And you have no evidence that it did happen. So it's not worth talking about because here we talk about evidence-based science. Okay. You can't win. You can't even break even. Well, that on that note, that was uh, – who was that here? I have to give credit. Mm. You can't win. You can't even break even. Mm-hmm. All right, that'll do it for another office hours. Thank you all for coming. Thanks to our moderators. Let's see, tonight we had <laughs> Vanity Nutrition, we had Steph, we had Les, we had um, uh, from Wisconsin, no, the airport. Um, we had uh, <laughs> Vanity, Steph, um, who else was here? Tom Tom, Tom was here from the airport. And I think that that's it for, for moderators. Thank you all for moderating. And thanks all of you for coming. Really appreciate it. We'll be back in two weeks. Uh, we are on the road. Bye, say goodbye to Karen. Oops, <laughs> I just blocked her out with the calendar. We don't want to do that. <laughs> We're going to be back in two weeks. And the date for that is uh, Wednesday, March 20th. We're going to skip a week. I'll be traveling. And uh, I don't want to do this on the road. But thanks to you all for coming. It's a great conversation you make, and uh, you bring up cool things. And I know we we diverge sometimes, but I think that's all the fun of having a, a conversation. And um, uh, meanwhile, have a great evening, have a great week, and, and be safe. Good night, and thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.